Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of the second series in this Discord GS the bot development series. In the last series we covered more of the handler itself and how you set it up. Uh, and it was a little bit confusing just because you had it to install the source code itself and set up TypeScript, etc. Uh, which a lot of people found confusing. We also talked about the very, very basics of command creation and event handling, etc. We won't be covering this in this series, but we will be covering more advanced stuff, such as command creation, how to create your own um, custom bots, etc. The first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and install Node, if you don't already have that installed. This will allow us to run our bot. Uh, of course, do go ahead and install the recommended version, not the latest version. I already have it installed, so I won't install it, but it's a very, very basic MSI installer. Uh, the second thing that you want to install is an IDE. Personally, I prefer Visual Studio Code. If you have one that's different, uh, do go ahead and install it. That's completely fine. This one is just better for uh, stuff like uh, JavaScript, which is what we're going to be writing. And of course, you can just add the um, extensions to other IDEs, but yeah. All right, so once we've done that, we can go ahead and start creating our bots. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create my bots folder. I'm going to go ahead and write it in my C. Um, so I'm going to go ahead into the C and I'm going to create a new file, a new folder. I'm going to call it tutorial bot with a lowercase o. We'll go right there. Tutorial bot. There we go. So now once we're in here, we can go ahead and navigate into that folder and open it using our command prompt. A good way to open this is just to click on the address bar on top and write CMD, uh, which is just going to open command prompt and uh, navigate into that folder for you. Other than having to navigate it yourself, it's going to do it for you. Of course, if you're on Mac or any other operating system, uh, do go ahead and figure out how to do that. But once you've opened the terminal inside of your bot, uh, bots folder, you can go ahead and close out of here or minimize. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and initialize our project. To initialize your project, it's quite simple. You're just going to write npm init. If you don't want to do all of the initialization steps, you can just do dash y, which is what I'm going to do. This is useful if you want to upload your package or your bot to an npm script, which I don't know why you would want to do that, but uh, if you want to do that, and you did dash y, you can go ahead and update it yourself manually in the package.json file. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install Node.js, um, which, I mean, Discord.js, and the gbf commands. gbf commands is just the command handler that we're going to be using. It's frequently updated, and it's quite feature-rich, so I recommend using it. If you have one that you want to use, of course, you can go ahead and use it, but this year's follows the gbf commands. So what we're going to do is we're going to say npm i discord.js and then gbf commands with as. <clears throat> Once we've installed this, might take some time just because they're big um, npms, but I don't think it will take too long. So let's just wait for it to install. And yeah, there we go. Once it has finished installed, you're going to go ahead and open the folder. Uh, using uh, the preferred ID. If you use Visual Studio Code and you're on Windows, inside the terminal, you can write code space dot. This will open Visual Studio Code inside of that folder. Once we're in here, we can go ahead and create our index.js file. So I'm going to write index.js. Uh, okay. Index.js. Of course, if you want to name it something else, you can go ahead and name it something else. This is going to be our main. Uh, our main like file, this is where the bot's going to start. Uh, but if you do go ahead and change it, you need to change your main over here. Uh, this is just because what we're going to use, or the script that we're going to use, that's going to start our bot, it's going to look for. One thing that we're going to install is going to be a node mount. So I'm going to say npm i-g node mount. This is going to install globally. This way we don't have to install in every single um, thing that we do. Of course, this is a um, thing that we used to, like a package that we used to automatically restart our bot. So instead of having to say node index.js, we can just say node mom 
index.js once and then we can just write nodemon. So we can just write nodemon and it's instantly going to look for index.js. Uh, and this will again automatically going to restart whenever we make any changes. So let's go ahead and create our client. So I'm going to say const client is going to be equal to new GBF, which is going to import from GBF commands. It's going to take an intent option, which I'm going to add gateway intent of guilds and gateway intent of guild members as of right now. And that's about it. I'm also going to add the auto login option, which is going to be true. Other than having to say client.login over here, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add the auto login. And I'm going to explain how that works. Uh, again, I'm going to add log actions, which is going to be true. This is just going to const log any of the handler actions that happen in the background. This way we know exactly what's going on. And uh, I can go ahead and export to this client. So I'm going to say module.exports is going to be equal to client. If you're on TypeScript, you can just go ahead and say export client. Both of them work. Uh, but one is for JavaScript, one is for TypeScript. Once we're in here, we can now go ahead and create our bots token. So you want to go into the developer portal, the developer portal over here. And you want to create a new application. So when you create a new application, I'm just going to call it tutorial bot. And I'm going to go ahead and create. Once I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and go into bot. I'm going to reset my token. And then I'm going to copy this. This token should never ever be given out. Whoever has access to this token has access to your bot. And then I'm going to write .env as a new file, .env. And inside of that .env, I'm going to write token with an all capital, uh, like it's an all capital word. It's going to be equal to and my token. Then I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And after this video, I'm going to reset this token just because this is a very important thing. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and private my bot. This way, only I can invite it. If you want a private bot, of course, you can enable this or disable this. And I'm going to enable the message content intent, uh, which the, is the privileged gateway intent. If you don't know what this is, uh, for safety reasons, uh, Discord does not give bots uh, all of the permissions, which is what they used to. Uh, you're going to need to specify them. And if you want a verified bot, which means a bot that is in more than 100 servers, you will need to specify the intents clearly, and you cannot use intents, or you cannot have intents that you won't use. Ignoring if you want to like uh, do that or not, Intents do eat up your RAM, and the more intents you have, the more RAM you'll use. So you won't not uh, you won't need to have intents that you won't need. Uh, for the messages, I'm going to add gateway intent bits dot message content and gateway intent bits dot guild messages. Messages. There we go. And now, once I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just save this. And uh, let's go ahead and sort our bot. The way we do this, again, it's just going to be nodemon. And it's going to go ahead and sort up. It says using this out intents. This is just because uh, of the errors over here. Use this out intents. Ignore the uh, second error and the warning. So this is just because some of the intents that we're using is does not use over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and enable this the server members intent. And now we can go ahead and restart. So node one. And the bot should start up. All right. As you can see, uh, the bot is now online. Uh, we can go ahead and ignore this warning. It's uh, completely fine to see it. Uh, this is just because we don't really have any database interactions. So we won't really, um, like it's because just we didn't provide the Mongo ARI, which will be in later videos. So let's go ahead and create a new server. I'm going to call the tutorial bot server. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to name it tutorial. And then I'm going to go ahead and create this over here. Uh, now let's go ahead and invite our bot. The way you can do this is by going to OAuth2, URL generator, and I'm going to choose bot and application commands. I'm going to give the administrator permissions. Of course, you never ever want to give administrator permissions to your bot. This is just for video and testing purposes. 
Uh, but yeah, never, ever, ever give your bot these type of permissions, especially if it's a public bot. So what's in here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new role, which is just going to have an administrator permission. So I'm going to call this just developer. And I'm going to put it on top. And I'm going to give it the administrator permission. Again, this is just for testing. You never really want to do this. Since as Discord says, this is a dangerous permission to grant. I'm going to give it to myself and I'm going to go ahead and give it to the bot. So now once we're in here, we can go ahead and start on creating our new commands or like generate our commands. You will see that the bot will have some commands by default, which is just going to be the add-in set. These are the built-in commands, of course. If you don't want them, you can go ahead and come over here and say disabled commands or disabled handler commands. And you can say built-in commands at all. This will disable all the built-in commands. You can do the same for events, but I already have them disabled. All right. So now once we're in here, we can go ahead and create our new file, which I'm just going to close out of this first. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call it commands. Instead of this commands folder, I'm going to create a new file, which is just going to be a ping command. So I'm going to call it ping.js. This is just going to be a very basic message command. Of course, later on in tiers, we're going to be covering more advanced commands. It's just telling you how the handler works. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say class ping command, which extends message command, extends <coughs> message command from GBF commands. And this is going to have a constructor, which contains the client super client and then comma and then an object. Over here, I'm going to say name, which is just going to be ping. Oh my god, this is not what's going to happen. <clears throat> Over here, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Name, which is going to be ping. Description, which is going to be replies with honk. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, just add the execute. So I'm going to say async execute which is going to take a client message and arguments, which is going to be a function. So now let's go ahead and create the function implementation. So I'm going to say return message.reply content punk. And then we're going to go ahead and export this. So I'm going to say module.export <coughs> is going to be equal to ping command. So let's go ahead and restart our bot. So I'm going to say CLS, just to clear my terminal. I'm going to say node mod. And as you can see over here, the bot is online. And it's going to go ahead and register the commands. But one thing we did forget is the commands folder. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say commands folder, which then we're going to go ahead and import path. So I'm going to say const path is going to be equal to require path. And this is going to be a path.join, their name, and then commands. And this is just the location of our commands folder. Make sure that the spelling is correct though. Since if it's not, you'll get the errors. As you can see, it's restarting and registered one message command. So if I come over here and I write ping with one exclamation mark, it's going to go ahead and reply spawn. Uh, double exclamation marks, actually. I forgot to specify the prefix. Uh, what we can do is we can go ahead and add prefix, which is going to be an exclamation mark. You can also add prefixes, which is just going to be an array of prefixes. So let's say you want a tilde over here, tilde. And let's say you want one. These will all work. So the bot is going to go ahead and restart. Uh, you can force restart it by using RS. And it's going to go ahead and restart. Once it's done restarted, you can go ahead and write ping. And it's going to reply to pong, till the ping. It's going to go ahead and reply to pong, one ping. And it's all going to work. Perfect. So now that we have done that, we can go ahead and create our first error slash command. Slash commands are quite simple. What we can do is we can create a new file instead of commands. Let's just call this. Um, it's called the sudo.js, which is just going to mimic the user. So I'm going to say module.exports. Module.exports is going to be equal to a class, which I'm going to call the sudo command. 
which is going to extend slash commands from GBF commands. Of course, this type of command is quite dangerous and you should never ever have one. This is just for demonstration purposes. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and create my constructor. So I'm going to say constructor, which is going to take in my client. And then I'm going to say super client and then my options. So now we can go ahead and add the name, which is just going to be sudo. The command description, which is going to be replies to your message with your message content. And then I'm going to go ahead and add options. So the first option is going to be the text, which is going to have a type of type of an application command option type dot string. And it's going to be required, which is going to be true. I'm also going to give it a min length of one character and a max length of 2048 characters. Perfect. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and create our execute function. So I'm going to say async execute, which is this going to take a client and then enter action. And that's about it. So now we can go ahead and create our very, very simple slash command. So I'm going to go ahead and say const user input, which is just going to be equal to interactions.options.getString. And I'm going to add text inside of here. And then I'm going to go ahead and return interaction.reply. And then I'm going to say content, which is just going to be a string literal of user input. So now we can go ahead and restart our bot. So now I'm going to clear my console. I'm going to write nodemon. And it's going to go ahead and start. And I did forget the description. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and say description which is going to be the text that you want me to reply to or copy. The bot is going to automatically restart. So once you're in here, let's just wait for it to restart. It could take some time depending on how many times you've been restarting it and your internet speed, uh, but it shouldn't take too long. If it's taking too long, then know that there's something wrong with your bot and you should definitely get it fixed. All right. I'll be back once it is done. All right, so now that it's done, we can go ahead and try out our new command. So I'm going to say slash and I'm going to write sudo, which it should be registered as a slash command. But sometimes if it's not, that's completely fine. You can just go ahead and restart Discord using uh, control R. But as long as it says registered one global command with the pink format, then you should be fine. So I'm going to go over here and it's going to say sudo and that is just say hello world. And it should reply with hello world. Perfect. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to create your own uh, context command. So I'm going to say this just as an avatar.js command where I'm going to say module.export is going to be equal to class, which is just going to be avatar ctx, which extends a context command. And instead of over here, I'm going to say my constructor, which is going to take in a client, super, which is going to be client, and the options, which is going to be name. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's say, for example, avatar. And it's just context type, which is required, of course, which is going to be application command option type dot user. And then the async execute, execute, which takes in a client and an interaction. And then let's go ahead and get the user's avatar. So I'm going to go ahead and reply with interaction dot reply with content, which is just going to be interaction dot target user dot display avatar URL which should be the case. This type of command takes long to uh, register, so I'll be back once it's registered. All right, so the command has registered. So once we're in here, we can go ahead and right-click any user. I'm going to go onto apps, avatar, and it's going to go ahead and reply with my avatar. So that's it for this video. This is just a quick introduction to the handler and how we're going to set up our project. Later episodes, I'm going to go ahead and talk about how you can create more advanced and events and stuff. If you did go ahead and enjoy this video, uh, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.